Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about Maddie. Well, not so much about my dog or about yours because I know many, do you have a pet? I know many of you do. Um, cats, dogs, and I don't mean to belittle anything that's not a cat or a dog. But those of us who uh, live with our four-leggeds, who are blessed by their presence, well, I think we have a different understanding of life because of that. I can tell you that uh, Maddie is almost 14. You know, that's like a, th a thousand years old. No, it's really close to a hundred years in dog life. Somewhere between 91 and wherever she is. And thank goodness she's in relatively good health. She moves between being filled with energy and having an attitude. Like she wants to, oh, now she wants to come up here, but now she, like she wants to, there we go. Um, she wants to take on the world, and other times she just wants to run and romp and play like she's a puppy. And um, there are other times, though, when she is, excuse my language, but neurotic as hell. You know, she will um, traipse along behind me, sometimes moving in front of me, and when she's in front of me, she has to stop every two st steps, two of my steps, to turn around and make sure I'm still there. And, uh, you know, she is like glued at, to me at the hip, which she didn't used to be quite this much when she was younger. But, you know, she's older, and don't we all age differently? She goes outside so that she can bark at everybody and everything because it's her corner that we live on. Other dog owners totally get it and they smile and, and laugh. Other people are annoyed with her because she, I'm sure they see her as just a little yippy dog. Of course, the whole time she's barking, she's wagging her whole body. And whenever I come home, her whole being is so excited to see me that she wags herself so much, I feel like she's going to throw her back out, which is not a common thing for uh, toy poodles to do. I've never had a poodle before, but now I've had this one for, you know, almost 14 years. She's graced my life. And certainly, as I've been healing from surgery, she has been like Nurse Maddie. She has been with me and sending her little healing energies to me and... Um, doing everything that she can to make mama feel better. Why is this important enough to bring up in our prayerful pause? Well, first off, because I know that many of you feel that way about your four-leggeds at home. And you can identify when I say that she walks around this yard like she is the mistress of the estate. And she gets an attitude on her that is incredible. Uh, especially after she's barked at somebody out the front door and then she comes in and she's like prancing around like, okay, this is my space, my turf. And when she's back here in the backyard, she runs and she looks like Wonder Dog, you know, with her ears going back and her hair going back and... I am talking about you, yes. Do you want to come up again? Of course, this is another game we play that I'm sure you do with some of your pets. Up, down, up, down, up, down. It's kind of like in, out, in, out, in, out. But there she is, happy again. All right, just lie down. The reason that I bring it up is because it dawned on me last night when I was watching how she acts. That that is in many, many ways, exactly how we act with God. There are times when we are just so proud of ourselves and we go strutting around, but then we look over our shoulder sometimes to make sure that God's still there. 
or we go running and flying like wonder dog through the backyard of our own adult lives and we just feel the wind and we know that we're safe and we know that we're cared for Every once in a while she has to ask me for something like to go out or to feed her. Every once in a while I have to ask God for something too. Once I figure out what it is, I'm happy to give it to her. I think God knows faster what it is that we need. And most of the time, just like with our four-leggeds, we don't have to ask God. God provides for us. Sometimes we get up next to God and we curl up. Maybe we even lie down on top of God and God just folds God's arms around us to keep us safe. Sometimes we go away. You know, it's never forever. But sometimes, you know, Maddie will go out in the backyard with the rest of the family while I take a nap. Now, God doesn't sleep. But still, after an hour or so when she sees me again, oh my gosh, the excitement is like she'd never seen me before and hadn't seen me in days. I think that there's something to be said for looking at all of our relationships with God in terms of that sort of excitement and trust, that sense of well-being, and how God just encourages us to be the best people we can. You know, I don't expect my dog to be able to do mathematics. I don't expect Maddie to be able to drive a car. God doesn't expect of me or us things that we are not capable of doing either. God understands our limitations. God knows what we're here for and what we're capable of because God made us. It's kind of a really interesting thing to think about, analogy to make, isn't it? And I'm sure that she cannot comprehend the ways of my mind and heart any more than I can those of God. But what joy she brings me, and what joy we bring God. And I delight in her as we are told that God delights in us. And God has infinitely more patience than I do because after the fourth or fifth time of lifting her up when she has decided to get down and walk around and then come back is annoying to me. <laughs> I get impatient. Thank goodness God doesn't. But I invite you today, whether you have a pet in your life or not, some critter that you love, I'm sure there are analogies for birds and iguanas and hamsters and gerbils and rabbits and all those other things that humans sometimes live with. I'm just not acquainted with them, nor do I need to be. Please don't send me any. But I'm sure there are parallels in one way or another because we're all connected, right? So on this day, I invite you to think of those parallels when you see any sort of creature. How's that? And say, huh, where's God in this relationship? All right, that's enough for today. Thank you for joining me for this prayerful pause with the pastor. I'm Pastor Deb Swift, South Presbyterian Church in Rochester, New York. And I invite you to come back and join us again. You can find more prayerful pauses or complete worship services on our YouTube channel at South Church Rochester or by going to our website. The address is on the end slide. 
And if you click on the picture on our home screen, it will take you automatically to our YouTube channel. Okay? Anyway, I hope you have a great day. God bless. Take care. See you next time. Bye for now.